Hi, it's Anne from the Useless Crafter for the 12 by 12 cardstock shop design team. I'm super excited to be doing this project today because it came from special requests from you guys. So it's the mandala. So you can see right here, it's got a bazillion layers. But before I get to it, I do want to stress though, because you guys post your comments down here, we want to know what you guys want to see and whether it's um, coming a tutorial from me or from someone else on the design team, we're totally open for it. Let us know what you want to see. All right, so I went crazy when I heard this is what you guys want to do. So <laughs> I went on Etsy because I wanted to find a crazy awesome project. And so I found this one. And um, so I'll post the link for the Etsy shop. But you can see here it is 16 layers. It's bananas. <laughs> it's a mandala like on steroids. So I mean, just look at this. This is before I'm doing anything. And this is actually just showing 15 layers. I decided to do something extra because I always love to use HTV on cardstock. So I'm going to show you that as well. I chose a foil, like a bronze foil, which I thought would be like just a great color for what we normally see when we see globes. Um, so that's gonna be on the hardware right here and that's gonna give it the really um, intricate design look to it. But you can see on here, I mean, it's just so many layers. It's different shades of green and blue. So um, with so many layers, I really had to go and pick different um, different shades from different product lines. So I ran into some issues where I thought something cut well, and then when I pulled it off the mat, some of it cut well and some of it didn't. So I wanna, we'll talk through that, but my new handy tool too is this Excel blade. So this really helped me cut um, through some of the things that didn't cut as well as I thought. And that's totally my mistake. Um, I always test it by lifting up a little bit off the mat, and it looked good. I should have tested some more. <laughs> the other thing that we're going to be using is Barely Arts glue. And the reason why is because of the precision tip. It is so fine that I'm going to be able to control it really well. Because you can see so this top layer, for instance, it's thin. So we're not, you know, we're going to have to just glue it down here. Let me move it over here so you can see. It's, it's a thin layer. So we're going to work on that. I also have just from the Dollar Tree some um, foam tape and so that's going to give it some layers where we can. So all right, let's get started on this bad boy. It's going to be so pretty. Um, I'm going to move this aside for now. Let's start with our HTV. So I love my mini for this type of project because I have a lot of control over where the heat goes. I'm just heating it up to two. You can use, I mean, of course, use any heating device that you have that you want to use with your HTV. But I like HTV because um, to me, you know, because the material is thicker, it can handle the more delicate, intricate cuts. And so I like using it for that. And then the weeding is easy for me. I don't mind the weeding part. Now, the other thing is I'm usually pretty, you know, because I use HTV quite a bit on my cardstock projects. And I don't know, I was just having a brain fart moment. Shiny side always goes down. And so if you could see on here, oh, you can see it a little bit. I cut on the wrong side. So you can see that cut here, but it didn't cut through. So then I put it on the right side. And then, so you can see on here, that's what it's supposed to look like. All right, so I'm gonna move all this off. Um, but I like using HTV. I like using the mini for this type of project because, like I said, I can control where the heat goes. And on when we're doing it onto cardstock, you know it's not obviously, it's not gonna go through the wash. So I don't have to make sure that the pressure and the heat time is on there. I just need to make sure that there's enough heat to activate the glue that's on here for it to stick to our layer. So this is gonna make it look super beautiful because it's a foil, so there's gonna be some shimmer. It's hard to tell right now because of this, this layer on top, but you wanna make sure that when you're ironing it on that you have a mat, otherwise everything underneath is gonna get warped. So, and what I mean by that is if I 
heat it directly onto this self-healing mat, my self-healing mat is going to get messed up. So, all right, I think what I'm going to do first, is I'm going to do that outer, I'm going to do this intricate thing on the bar. Okay, so let's do that. And I'm going to try not to get the circle because the circle is going to be its own. We're going to heat that up in a little bit. Okay, so it's, it's coming down. And the reason why I went with the foil is I wasn't really looking at the design so much as I was reading it and it said, you know, it's a really thin layer. So I just thought this would give me a chance because when it's really thin, you don't really want to cut on glitter cardstock, for example. And I love glitter cardstock, but, um, you know, it needs really um, a lot of pressure. And so you end up either not cutting through or kind of just messing up your paper. So I right away. I knew I wanted to do this. So let's see if that's going to work. And I believe this is a cool peel. Yeah. Okay. So now let's do the circle. Okay. Let's hope. I can peel this off. Oh, I didn't. I'm gonna heat it some more. And I used, um, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure this back layer, and I'm gonna go get this, hold on. There's like a little squeegee thingy <laughs> that helps kind of gets it to lay down. Um, so with the back, the globe, I really like the light, dark light. So if you remember, the, the next layer that goes on top is a metallic silver. So do you see? It's just so beautiful, right? All right, let's see. I might have to hit this with a little bit more heat in the circle, but what I'll do in the meantime is I'll cut this part off because I want to peel it off before it settles down. Okay, oops. Okay, so let's get scissors. Okay, so let's get this. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect right here because there's so many things sitting on top. In fact, the circle part, I mean, we probably didn't even need to cut it because um, it's completely covered. So it's okay if that part's messed up. It's, that, it's this rim right here that is what's important. So actually... Now that I remember that, I'm just gonna pull this off because it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off, ignore this part, and can you even see, oh there. Look, it's so pretty. That looks so legit. <laughs> All right, so let me show you what this layer looks like. Here's our next layer. So this is going to sit on top. So you see that circle. Oh, man, I just wasted a ton of HTV on that, huh? Um, that's the way the design was done. But this is what that looks like. 
So I think what we're going to do is let's do, I think I'm going to glue down the circle first and then flip it over like this and dot the, um, the glue on the really thin parts. So that sounds like a game plan to me. So let's move things out. And let's make sure that we line this up so that all the pieces just kind of fall down once we put the glue down. Okay, so here's this glue. Um, I love it. I use it for a lot of projects. This is the stopper. So this stays on overnight, for instance. And then you just undo this and you put on your precision tip. And all you do is just twist it like that. Okay. So this is lined up. And I think what I want to do is just to make sure it stays down. I'm also going to do I'll just do the glue. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm debating back and forth. Okay, so I'm going to lift this up. And you can see the thin lines that come out. So I love this glue. Okay. So I'm gonna put it down. It does dry pretty quickly. I mean, not, not instantly. So you still have time to kind of adjust. And I wanna adjust it to make sure that it's on here so that my trim lines up perfectly. And I only put glue on this side. So I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna put my cell phone down to keep it down. <laughs> All right, let's look at these pieces right here. I'm gonna move this aside for a second. All right, so let's do, let's do the blue first. So with the blue, this top layer, this first layer of blue, I'm gonna flip everything over because I already put it in order. I did go from light to dark for both the green and the blue. So that's different here as opposed to this. For this, I went light, dark, light, so that you could see the difference between um, all the different layers. Oh, I'm sorry. This one. Um, and trust me, I, I had different ideas what thought I thought would look good. I always pull out my papers beforehand and put them next to each other and a lot of times, you know, the ideas, it still sounds good, but until you cut it and you layer it, I find that I still, unless I've already done the project and I know I'm just kind of changing a little bit of the shade, um, that's different, but I find that it's still trial and error until I actually cut it and have the right pieces layered on top. So I went, originally I went with like a deep dark blue. I couldn't see anything. So <laughs> on this one, light, dark, light. But for this, I went from dark to light for both the blue and the green. Okay. Now with this blue layer, because it's so full, we can do our glue dots, our foam dots. So this is going to give it some dimension. Just It's already layered because you saw when I first turned this on, it looks amazing because even with cardstock, it's going to have that layered look um, with so much cardstock, right? I mean, we had 17 layers. So I'm just going to put some on here so that we can go through this relatively quickly. And in the meantime, what I need to do is I need to find my little stopper for the glue. I don't have it. Um, they came out, Barely Art came out with this little um, plastic piece and it's awesome, except I put it away. It's always when I put it away that I can't remember what great hiding place I thought it would make sense to put it in. <laughs> okay, so with the glue, the foam dots, or in this case, foam squares, um, I like this one because it's a quarter of an inch thick. So it gives you that layered look effortlessly because it's so thick. 
Um, but what I hate about glue dots is this process that we literally have to peel off every single tab. Um, so that's a little bit annoying, but it's going to make so much of a difference here. Okay. And I like to put it where my image isn't going to be lopsided. So, you know, you want to just make sure that it stands perfectly um, parallel, I guess. Okay, so let's move this out. Let's get this back in. And I'm going to tape this side down because we didn't put any glue on or glue this down. And remember, we haven't glued this yet. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm just going to lift this up. This can bend a little bit and I'm going to add the glue here. Now it doesn't need a lot of glue. It just needs some because the globe is already down. We just need it to not, you know, flap up. Now, there's also a reel of me weeding the HTV so you can see how I do it. And then also, there's one of me taking it off the mat. I like to use the 12 by 24 mat, which comes in the green. And a lot of people think that the green, well, I mean, even Cricut themselves, <laughs> The green mat might be too sticky for your cardstock, but I find that if you have a good method of pulling it up, that you can use that for cardstock as well. It's the it's the one with the best buy, so that's the one I'm gonna use. <laughs> okay, so here we go. This is completely glued down. So, and I'm gonna show you, see it doesn't, there's no flapping, there's enough glue that it stayed down, and you saw it, nothing came out. The, just it comes out just enough glue so i love it okay so here's our blue layer and this one covers the silver completely so i'm just gonna put it down so here's our first layer and you can see a little bit there's already a gap right so as we build this it's just going to be bigger and bigger and bigger okay so here's our next layer and so we're gonna put glue on the back, or tape foam squares on the back. I'm gonna move this aside. Now, I was tempted to find a design where I was gonna incorporate lights as well. So let me know if that's something you wanna see. Um, and then also, I've been seeing a lot in my Instagram feed um, that it's coming from the quilling, um, the quilling creators, but they did a scene and then they also added um, the name. So how cute is that, right? So like um, a little name cutout. So I think that would be also a really, really good idea. Okay, so this layer comes in a little bit. So it doesn't fit the full um, blue circle as the outer, outer layer. So you just wanna make sure that you are, um, you have an even border. So there, you can see it's so pretty. Okay, <laughs> this one, here we go. Now, with, I used beautiful basil paper for the most part. And so I've noticed when I cut basil paper, um, because it's a little bit thicker, sometimes I needed to cut it twice. Now, if you're using your Cricut machine to cut, which is what I have, I have the maker, um, to cut again ex over the same lines, you just don't, um, 
you just want to hit the C button. So it cuts again without pulling the mat out. So that means it's going to cut directly like on the same path that it just cut before. So that way um, you don't have any duplicate lines. You just have a really well cut piece. Now, of course, like I said, I made the mistake on two colors, on two sheets of my green. I really had to use my knife to help weed some of this stuff, which was um, normally, I would, normally I would just have cut it because, 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 because that was so much work. <laughs> I don't know why I'm struggling right now. Okay, hold on. Let me move this this way so I can see a little bit better. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> Let me pull it up so you can see it. It's just, it feels already heavy. There's a lot of layers and you can see already it's stacking up, right? Okay, next layer. This layer still has plenty of space to put the foam tape, so I'm gonna do that as well. So let's move it aside and put some on here. But you can see it's starting to get really intricate. And wait till the light blue layers are just so pretty. Absolutely love this design. And then while I was searching for this, I also saw some that are more like it's out of cardstock, but it was um, it was like a 3D puzzle. So like imagine like the globe, except it's actually a sphere. So um, there's so many options. I don't know. I would have never gone down this route. So I'm super excited that you guys asked questions and posted things that you wanted to see. So you can. Um, we're always reading your comments. So. It's a great way to get the tutorial that you want to see. Okay, so here we go. Move this over so that I can see it a little bit better. Again, I just love how it's you know easy to match up so you can see what's going on. And there we go. Okay, next layer, same thing with this one. I mean, look at how beautiful that is. Just love it. Okay, here we go. Oops, I don't want to put it on there in case I'm smushing it. So let me move this out of the way. I'm going to unplug my little mini. So give me a second. All right, here we go. Is super generous with that line. <laughs> okay, here we go. And then I don't know if you saw this, on the on the Instagram stories but they just got a new product in and it's the shrink wrap so you can draw a design on it and then stick it in the oven or use a heat gun it looks like and it will shrink it and then you can either use it as a charm um, for your keychain or a bookmark. I'm not even sure, but I'm super excited to try it out. So maybe you'll see that video coming up. Okay, so this one, let's line this up again. I'm gonna turn it over so I can see it better. Okay. 
Oh. I did not line that up well. I thought I did. You saw me. Okay, let's see. There we go. Love it. Okay, so it's getting smaller and smaller where we can do it. And I see a little spot here that didn't cut, that didn't pop out. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to make sure. Okay. And I think it was this layer. It was this layer. So another tip is when you're cut, if you're cutting this on your mat and you know, by the time I got to this one, this was my second to last color that I cut after everything. So there was a lot of debris on my mat. And so you can see right here, it ripped because there was stuff underneath. It didn't get a clean cut. So what you need to do is make sure that your mat is clean. And I just, <clears throat> excuse me, I just pulled that off because with all the beautiful details, no one's going to notice that this one's missing the little C right there, uh, even though I'm pointing it out to you. <laughs> but um, yeah, you just need to make sure that your mat is clean and that also the paper is sticking really well to the mat. If there's any movement at all, your blade's going to kind of pull your cardstock and you're not going to get a clean cut. The worst, I mean, Best case scenario is you don't get a clean cut and you can fix it. Worst case scenario is, you know, you just mangle it. This is actually not the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario would be it mangled up your paper so badly that you need to recut it, right? I mean, at least here, I just pulled out the seat. It could have just ripped into here like it's done before. So <laughs> just a word of caution. And we only have one more layer of the blue before we get into the green. So we're getting there. And I, you know, I really like it because I can see the last layer of the blue. So all of the blue is going to have the foam tape. And I think where we will draw the line is the first layer of the green will have the foam tape, but the rest won't because then it will be consistent. And I think that would look better, but that's, you know, it's personal preference. See, once I put it down, you don't, you don't really notice the C that's missing right here, right? It's small. And I have one more layer of blue before we even get to the green, right? <laughs> okay, so let me pick this up so you can see how thick this is. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. Okay, <laughs> last layer coming of the blue. So let's just double check. I see there's a couple spots on here that I need to just poke through. And it's a lot easier to, you know, do it now than it is once it's on there. So just want to make sure. And I think that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to put it aside. Let's put our foam squares on here. And I might even put one right there. Okay. okay, let's peel this up. Now, if you don't have foam squares, the other thing that I used to do because I hated this so much is you can use your glue gun and you could do little dots and let it dry. So we're not using the glue gun to actually glue. We're using the glue gun to dry little spacers, basically. Um, and that's okay to do depending on your paper because you might be able to see the glue, you know, the heat coming through. So you wanna just make sure that you know which paper you're doing that on. That's just an alternative. Okay, here we go. All right, so now for sure 
where is that C supposed to be? I don't even know where we're missing that C. So C, you can't see it. So don't worry about the little mistakes leading up to this. There's so many layers, especially in the back ones. But look at this. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put this aside because we'll put it on at the very end. So let's, this time, let's go from the top down. So we're going to flip this over and put, you know, glue. And I don't know if, oh yeah, you can see the glue on here. We don't need to glue everything down, just enough so that it's not going anywhere. That's going to be enough for me. I'm going to hold this up and put it down. Okay, flip this over. Let's do this layer and it gets thicker and thicker. So it's going to be easier to put down the glue. And you can see I used my mat, no glue came out. It's just so easy to get the right amount of glue. It dries clear. Oops. I see this here. It dries clear, so you can get some on the other side. Whoa! <laughs> and it will be okay. And after we glue this all down, um, we'll just have it, we'll have my cell phone or something sitting on top to make sure that it really gets the pressure and it's gonna dry flat. Okay, so here we go. And you can see it's much thicker now, right? It'll be a lot easier to add the glue. And like I was saying earlier, you don't need to get glue everywhere. This is going to stick without getting every square inch of it. And because this is so precise, it was it's so easy to put the paper down and line up. I get that it's so beautiful. Okay. last layer of this green and then we have this portion left to do I mean this one should we layer it there's plenty of room for it I'm gonna say no I'm just gonna glue it down and then we'll put the foam tape to this piece Okay, so this is down. I'm gonna put it underneath. Actually, I'm gonna put it a bunch of coasters on top. Just so that it's laying flat. All right, let's do this one. Let's work on this one. Okay, 
Okay. We're going thin again. I feel like I'm putting on way more glue than I need to, but I'd rather do it now than try to fix it later. So let's oh, just put it down, knowing that it dries clear, right? That's fine. Okay, there we go. Okay, flip this over. Got some excess glue, I'm just going to wipe it off right there. Okay, that's looking good. Getting easier, right? It's getting thicker, so. And for the most part, if you're using the more expensive paper to get, you know, the shimmer and the texture, you're going to be able to tell which side is up and which side is back. But sometimes just make sure that you're putting glue on the right side, because um, for some cardstock, you can't tell which side is the face up side. Okay, here we go. The other um, tip that I have for you is if you're using a Cricut to cut this, like I did, um, I made this, this is actually, when you first go in to measure it, um, you know, you wanna be under, you wanna be at 11 and a half inches or smaller if you're using 12 by 12 cardstock. But because you can see this, this length right here is the longest. So if you rotate your image, sorry, let me move this over a little bit. If you rotate, instead of having it straight up, because straight up, it's gonna measure this length as really long because it goes, it has, you know, from here all the way to the bottom right here. So what you wanna do is you wanna rotate your image so it's diagonal. It's gonna give you a little bit more. So this ended up being over 12 inches. So actually, if I measure it straight up and down, yeah, it's over 12 inches. So you can, you have a little bit of play, play area right there. All right, let's put the last layer on here. And then for the glue, in case you're wondering, um, when I'm done, which I won't do it right away like I normally would because I am doing this tutorial with you guys, but I would take off the tip and run it under hot water and then um, just put it in a paper towel and let it dry and so that it's ready to go for next time. Without any glue residue, it flows and gives you just the amount 
the right amount of glue. There we go. So that's all done. I'm going to now give it the special treatment over here and let it kind of dry flat. And here's our piece. It's, you know, it's flat. You can see that even though it's glue, it's beautiful. Um, so this piece goes right here. And this one, we're going to add the foam squares. And I'm just pressing down just to make sure that it's giving it a good stick because once I can't press down that hard on here because of look at all those layers. I don't want to smush those layers. So I really want to make sure that it's sticking onto this as best as possible. And then I'm just gonna hold it there. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> All right, this did not get a lot of rest time, but that's okay. We'll flip it over and put some foam tape on here. Make sure to tag us if you're on Instagram and you do this project. If you change up the colors, I mean, I'm always, I love seeing um, unexpected colors for this. So I don't know if you decided to do like a purple theme or something like that, that would look super cool. <laughs> Oops. Okay, we are almost done. Let's get this over here. And we're done. Let me show you the layers on this side. Oh my God, it's so thick. <laughs> That's a book. Um, it is looking beautiful. And I just wanna lift it up so that you don't get the glare, but I love this foil, the HTV foil. It really just adds to it. And then um, for this rim, um, it is like a metallic, um, metallic paper. So just like you would normally, I think, see. Let me, I see something that's bothering me. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, so thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I absolutely love, love this. So thank you for all the people who requested this because I don't think I would have found this on my own. So I really, I mean, I just love discovering new things and this was so much fun. All right, I will see you guys next time. Thank you.